What's going on everyone? Kurt Widener here in the Team Animal Training Compound. Happy Memorial Day. I hope everyone's having a good day and a good weekend. Before we get started, um, I just want to remind you, you know, take, take a moment to think about what today is about and why this is a really important day. There's been, you know, many who have come before us who sacrificed everything to protect the freedom that we all as individuals and as people get to enjoy on a regular basis. And that's something that should absolutely never be taken for granted. So enjoy the day. You get a little extra time, you know, with your family and friends, maybe have a barbecue. But just remember, you know, that, that freedom that you get to enjoy and why you have that, because a lot of people have, have done things to enable us to continue enjoying that freedom. So happy Memorial Day. So today we're going to do Ask the Animal Episode 7. Um, my buddy Steve had a really great question, so I'm just going to allocate this entire video to this question because there's a lot of different elements in answering it. So the question is, how do you power through two plus hours of intense workouts and train six days a week without feeling the effects of overtraining? He goes into some more depth with some of his questions. There's um, a lot of different parts that I want to address here. I think it's a great question and something that is probably on the minds of a lot of people who have paid attention to you know, my, my videos and my training um, that I've you know, posted over the years. First and foremost, you have to consider adaptation. So uh, my body has adapted to extremely high volumes of training. And this is something that started for me a long, long time ago. Um, I, I grew up playing sports and my main sport was ice hockey. Um, and, you know, I started doing push-ups and sit-ups when I was eight years old. By middle school, I was, you know, working out playing on multiple hockey teams and by high school I was not only a three sport athlete in high school but by, during the summer months I was training all the time. Um, I played defense and so in high school I would I was um, playing every other shift. We basically had you know four guys that were our main go-to so there was the rule with me is you're not allowed to get tired because you're gonna have to skate all the time. So I I trained in, in a fashion where I used to go to the, the fields and start by doing 80 and 100 meter sprints. Then I would go to the gym and do like, you know, supersets and drop sets of leg presses and squats and all kinds of leg movements. And then I'd go home and I'd do plyometrics. And I would just, I would just butcher the hell out of my legs to get them to acclimate to being able to uh, continue to perform and not get tired. So over time, my body has adapted to being able to handle a, a large workload, very repetitive, um, you know, workload. And then when I transitioned from ice hockey to bodybuilding, um, I basically utilized that to my advantage. So, um, you know, I, I had that anaerobic endurance built up. And so then it just, it was, I ended up doing, you know, more and more uh, weightlifting at high volume to... Uh, enable hypertrophy and that was that's kind of been the backbone of my training that's been my style so you kind of have to take that into consideration when you look at my training methods um, this isn't something that you can just dive into I mean if you're not used to training like that you know you can't just go right to I'm gonna do two and a half hour workouts I'm gonna do 50 and 60 sets because it's something that you have to build a tolerance to over time but that's something that can be done. You know, you can incrementally increase your number of sets, some of your reps, and continually make things harder and harder till your body uh, adapts to being able to, to do that without getting tired and to continue to be able to perform. Um, one of the next and, and most important things is, is in order to train like that, in order to do a, a two and a half, three hour workout and be able to perform through all of it, um, is, is proper nutrition. So you really need to make sure that your nutrition's on point. If you're eating like crap, if you're under eating, if you're not getting certain nutrients, your, your performance is going to suffer, uh, especially as you get, you get halfway through the workout and you're going to, it's going to be garbage. So, you know, you obviously protein is always the backbone of my meals. I get at least five good meals in a day. Uh, you need a good, good quality carbohydrates. You need some good quality fats. Sodium is one of the most underplayed, underrated you know, nutrients. If you don't have sodium, you will not perform. And some people think I need to go low sodium. Um, there is actually, sodium is one of the most important things, especially for people who are for athletes, 
for bodybuilders, anybody who's training really hard, if you don't get enough, you, your, your training is going to suffer. You, your, your muscles cannot fire. They can't perform well without it. So make sure all those things are on point. Um, you know, people worry a lot about catabolism and when it, when it comes to long duration training and in actuality, it's something that earlier in my, my bodybuilding career, I used to worry more about. I don't worry about as much. I think you can, you can actually handle a lot more training than you think without having to worry about actually breaking down. And, and really my evidence of that is that I've been training in this way for decades and I've, uh, I mean, still at 45 years old, I'm able to, you know, maintain my muscle, maintain my strength, maintain my conditioning and still do these workouts. And I'm not, I'm not losing muscle. In fact, you know, when I competed a couple of years ago at, um, it was 2019. So at that point I was 43 years old and that was the best package I ever brought to the stage. So I've been training like this for a long time. I didn't lose muscle in the process of doing it. So it's worked for me. And that's not to say it would work for everybody. Everybody's different. So third thing, um, that I want to, you know, discuss here as far as, uh, an important factor that helps you to be able to do these type of workouts, assuming everything is on point, your nutrition's on point, your hydration, your sleep, the way you're programming as far as the way you're setting up your workout program, what you're doing on what days, but supplements can be of a huge benefit. Now, they are not magic formulas like some people want to think they are, but if you have everything else in place, then there are certain supplements that are very beneficial ingredients that are going to support you, your body to be, to be more anabolic, less catabolic. Um, they're going to, you know, enable uh, anaerobic endurance um, and just some of those things like in a pre-workout, creatine monohydrate, obviously been around for a long time, uh, beta alanine, betaine, um, alcar, which is acetyl L-carnitine, uh, PICO2, um, HMB, Taurine, citrulline, malate, hydromax. These are all things that I put in my pre-workout concoction. I like to build my own and then I'll usually, you know, add some like core ABC for, uh, for flavor and additional BCAs. Then there's some other ingredients that fall into more of a, a, a stimulant, nootropic uh, ingredient, something like caffeine, obviously. And caffeine gets overplayed. People think too much of, of um, you don't need a ton of caffeine. A little bit of caffeine stacked with certain other ingredients can actually go a long way in terms of providing energy and mental cognition. So um, a supplement that I really like in a small dosage is alpha yohimbine, which I just take two milligrams a day um, as part of my pre-workout on an empty stomach. Uh, I'll throw it in earlier before my pre-workout meal or with my pre-workout concoction so that my stomach's relatively em empty. Alpha GPC, Huprazine, those stack together. Um, and again, none of them have to be in a really high dosage, but just they have a very synergistic effect um, and really can enable long lasting energy and mental focus. Um, I am a believer in BCAs during my workout. So something like a core ABC or the other one, I don't know if I, I think I have a container over here. Um, the Miracle Lab Supremos, which is essential amino acid supplement, something like that. I'll even throw additional BCAs in with it. Sip on during the workout. I'll even add salt to it as well. Okay. Beyond that, um, there are some other supplements that help just to, um, to help with uh, hormone balance, um, anabolism. Uh, some for you to check out. If you go to Core Nutritional site, um, Bolic which is a two ingredient formula. I don't want to go into depth because this is not a video about supplements. Uh, Full Metal Jacket, uh, Alpha Hard, uh, 5AT, Liberty Balls. Those are all uh, products that Core, Nutrition, Core Nutritionals and Miracle Labs makes that I, I firmly believe in. I think they, they definitely elevate performance. They can enable uh, greater hypertrophy and muscle protein synthesis. Um, like I said, if you're doing everything else right, they can give you that extra 2 to 5%. They're not magic formulas, but they do work, and I do believe in them. Or if I didn't believe in them, I wouldn't waste my time and my money taking them. So, fourth thing that I want to talk about, um, mindset. And mindset is, 
is really everything. It's important when, you know, before you come into the gym that you establish a plan and you commit to that goal. So I write down what I want to do and what I want to accomplish before I come to the gym. I come in with that. So when I get here, I don't have to think about it. And no matter what it is, I commit myself to being able to complete that. And so me mentally I've committed, all right? So no matter how I feel once I'm in here, it's like, no, you, you got to finish what you started. And over the years, I've come up with a lot of different crazy ideas. I mean, one of the craziest that I did was a few years ago, I went in and I decided on my trap bar, I was going to do 100 reps with 420 pounds, four plates per side. Um, so I did five sets of 20. It was one of the most absolutely brutal things I ever made myself do. By the fourth set, I was like turning white. I was hyperventilating. And I was like, I don't, you got this idea in your head. You got to freaking finish this. And I was not going to allow myself to quit before I did it. I don't care what happened. It's like I had to finish it. Um, years and years ago when I was training with Brian Whitaker, uh, we came up with this crazy idea to do two, two, two squats. We did 225 of uh, 10 sets of 20. So 200 reps with 225. Probably, honestly, one of the dumbest things I've done, but, you know, you're actually breaking the muscle tissue down beyond which it can require, repair in a reasonable period of time. However, the mental fortitude that resulted from being able to do that and the fact that I can just say, hey, I accomplished that, so there isn't really anything I can't do. You gain mental strength as well as physical strength from some of the things that you're able to push yourself through. The body follows the mind. So the stronger your mind is and the more you're willing to commit yourself to mentally, the more you can do physically. And that goes a long way. You know, whenever you take on a large task, um, you have to know how to mentally tackle that task. And um, you, what you really have to do is break it down to small segments. And I don't care whether you're looking at a 25-week contest prep to get ready for a show or a daunting workout or, like, if you even look at, like, like how... Um, I've read a lot about, you know, um, Navy SEALs and how they get through training and different things. And you, you, you have to break it down to small intermediate tasks that are kind of like checkpoints to the goal. So when you read a lot about like Navy SEALs and what they go through with the BUDS training, all they think about is getting to the next meal. Okay. Um, and I've done similar sort of things when I've gone through a, a contest prep and you're exhausted, you're unlimited calories, you're pushing your body to do more. It's like, what's that next checkpoint? And the harder it gets, the closer that checkpoint needs to be. So it's sometimes it's just, let's get this next set in and don't even think beyond that. Don't think of the entirety of this three hour workout that you're gonna do because it can mentally destroy you and break you down. You just think about, I got another set of 15 reps right now and that's all I'm worried about, one rep at a time until it's done. <clears throat> so, um, you know, the, the, the mental aspect of it is huge. If you don't have that, you're not, it doesn't matter how good in shape you are, you're not going to be able to push through big things. With all that, have, you know, uh, having been said, you do have to realize that you have to fluctuate your training volume. So you can't continually just have elevated training volume all year, year round. I'm going to go through periods where sometimes I may train five days a week, sometimes it may be six you know, sometimes the volume within the workout is going to adjust. And there's during there's periods through which you can overreach and do more. And then there's periods which you have to back off slightly and because your body may not be able to keep up with the recovery. And a lot of that has to do with reading your body and listening to your body. Um, you have to, you know, look at your, your strength, your energy, your ability to focus during your workouts. Is it improving or is it getting worse? So, you know, this, this past week was a good example because I had been training six days a week for several weeks. All my workouts are great. My energy was great. My strength was good. This last week, I started to feel midweek like I was a little maybe run down. I could start to feel myself getting a little tired earlier in the workout. And it's like mentally it was almost starting to fade. Like I could feel myself wanting to space out a little bit, which, you know, if I love to train and I look forward to my workout. And if I get to a point where... I feel like that. I know it's not, you know, me bullshitting myself and saying, well, I just want to take it easy. I don't want to take it easy. I don't like taking it easy. But with all that, with, with me listening to my body, I knew it was time. I needed an extra day. So yesterday I didn't train. I usually train on Sunday. And then this morning I came in 
and I felt great. I had an awesome two plus hour shoulder back core workout and my body just needed that one day to catch up a little bit and I was able to hit it hard. So really one of the most important things I could tell everybody is you gotta learn how to listen to your body, okay? Um, one of the last points is this with me personally, as I've gotten older, I've had, you know, pathology with different things. I mean, I prefer greater training frequency because it facilitates blood flow. I like getting in here, getting some movement because the more movement and things I do, the better I feel. If I sit around too much, if I, too much time off for me doesn't work. Now, that's me. You got to figure out what works best for you. So hopefully that answers your question and provides you some good information. But ultimately, you got to figure out what's best for you in terms of your, your training frequency, your training volume. And, you know, I think everybody can, can learn to do more, but it's something that you have to build up to. But, you know, set goals, challenge yourself, and work to become better. Anyway, that's all I got on this one. Uh, hope you all have a great Memorial Day. Um, go get after it. Um, and remember, subscribe to my video. Make sure you hit like. If you have questions or comments, please post them below or send me a message. Have a great one, everyone.